is an asymptomatic infection, if that can lead to a long-term disability, it really should change how we think about this disease, even from a public health perspective. For patients suffering serious symptoms of COVID-19, it's as if the brakes have stopped working on their body's defence systems. But a team of scientists in America think they may have discovered why the brakes are failing. We're excited about this model. The early clinical results are consistent with the model. That's really good news. Uh, we want to do further experiments in model systems to bear this out. We want to see clinical trials. This is Dr. Daniel Jacobson, a computational systems biologist at Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee. With his team, he's been studying how the SARS-CoV-2 virus is doing harm. The Summit computer at Oak Ridge is the second fastest in the world, but it still took a week to analyse 17,000 gene expression datasets, which guided Dr Jacobson and his team and helped them come up with what they call the Bradykinin hypothesis. Bradykinin is a molecule or peptide made up of a short chain of amino acids that promotes inflammation. It's part of the Kallikrein kinin system, or KKS, and intersects with the renin angiotensin system, or RAS, which controls many aspects of the circulatory system, including the body's levels of bradykinin, which helps regulate blood pressure and blood vessel permeability. Think of it as a system with an accelerator and a brake. The accelerator is depressed when you have an infection, and the brake starts to be depressed to keep the acceleration from getting out of control. The coronavirus affects the brake in the RAS and KKS. The virus effectively breaks the brake. Dr. Jacobson says a COVID-19 infection typically begins when the virus enters the body through what are known as ACE2 receptors on cells in the nose. It then travels through the body, entering other cells which have ACE2 receptors, such as in the heart, kidneys, intestines, muscles, brain and lungs. When the virus hits the RAS system, the body overproduces and stops breaking down bradykinin. We're calling this a bradykinin storm, where it's out of control, and that leads you to the spiral of outcomes. Excess bradykinin will lead to gaps in your blood vessels. It permeabilizes your blood vessels, so fluid will actually start to leak out. Your blood pressure will go down. You start to lose fluid. It also leads to inflammatory responses and the immune cells in your bloodstream also now have a chance to exfiltrate, to squeeze out of your blood vessels into the surrounding tissues. Dr Jacobson's team believe the pathology of COVID-19 is likely the result of bradykinin storms rather than cytokine storms. Early in the pandemic, we heard a lot about coronavirus infections causing cytokine storms. Cytokines are small proteins released by cells in the immune system. They coordinate the body's response against infection and trigger inflammation. But sometimes excessive or uncontrolled levels of cytokines are released, which then activate more immune cells, resulting in hyperinflammation, a symptom common in those severely affected by COVID-19. The cytokine storm hypothesis was a projection out of other disease conditions, other diseases where people have seen cytokine storms. And so we saw this sort of blitzkrieg of different symptoms that we couldn't explain in COVID-19. But there have been several papers by other groups recently looking hard for that cytokine storm and not really finding it. They're saying, sure, some cytokine involvement, but it doesn't seem to be going haywire. So that model is being challenged a bit by the scientific literature. But a Bradykinin storm ties together explanations of what's going on around the body. At these points of infection, Dr Jacobson says they'd expect to see blood pressure going down and the leakage of fluid and inflammatory responses in the tissues. We've mapped all those out so we sort of know where to look. We said, well, what happens if we have a Bradykinin storm in the intestines? Well, you'll get a lot of GI symptoms. You're going to get nausea, you're going to get diarrhea. Um, you're going to get a lot of pain. Well, that's exactly what we see in a lot of COVID-19 patients. One of the bradykinin receptors is involved in pain responses. And we know from other conditions that excess of bradykinin will lead to very sore muscles and joints. And that's what we see in a lot of COVID-19 patients. What if this hits the brain? Well, you're going to get fluid leaking out of the blood vessels in the brain. And we've heard a lot about the neurological symptoms in COVID-19, the brain fog, um, the confusion, um, the headaches. The world is still waiting for a vaccine, but with this hypothesis, if the research bears out, there are multiple therapeutics that already exist that can put the brakes back on this Bradykinin storm.
Are there any existing treatments that can be tested in clinical trials? I think um, right now we're looking at about a dozen different drugs that can be, be applied here. Um, we want to be very careful. Um, we're always worried about you know, the law of unintended consequences. Um, there can be side effects of drugs. And you want to make sure you don't do something that accidentally makes something worse. During their analysis, Dr. Jacobson's team made another important discovery. Using samples taken from inside the lungs, they compared a control group with COVID-19 patients. They found the virus also affects the hyaluronic acid in the lungs. It's naturally produced in the body, and its main function is a thin protective layer, or lubricant. When it hits water, it can absorb over a thousand times its own weight in water. It becomes a hydrogel. And so what we saw in COVID-19 patients is the three genes that are responsible for synthesizing hyaluronic acid were all um, significantly upregulated. And two of the genes responsible for degrading hyaluronic acid, keeping it under control, were significantly downregulated. And you're also letting a lot of plasma, a lot of water effectively leak into that same space and you're gonna form a hydrogel. It's like having jello in your lungs. And those are the surfaces where you're trying to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide. And that simply doesn't happen well through a hydrogel. This could explain why some COVID-19 patients have suffocated even when on ventilator support. There have been past studies of hyaluronic acid getting out of control where x-rays showed spots throughout the lungs, which is common in severe COVID-19 patients. But a recent study also saw that in about half of the asymptomatic people with COVID-19. Our fear is now with this latest paper, if this is already happening and people are asymptomatic, there may be a fair amount of damage going on that they're completely unaware of, but they can go from asymptomatic to a long hauler with long-term long -term outcomes. And some of the long haulers are reporting that, is that they, they didn't have an acute infection and now they're having a long-term consequence. So there's a spectrum in the long hauler communities between people who were hospitalized and severely ill versus those who had you know, fairly mild cases or, or were pretty much unaware and then later started having symptoms. If all that is true, that really should change how we think about this disease, even from a public health perspective. Because an asymptomatic infection, if that can lead to a long-term disability, that's a radical impact on society. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications. We'll see you next time.